The last uh, lecture was about uh, art and aesthetics. And this one is about uh, art, history, and time. But since um, this prospectus and the course outline speak about uh, to Swamiji's thoughts uh, being uh, pertinent to the course, one looks at uh, Swamiji's perspectives in this regard. And one discovers that uh, he is neither concerned with his, his art, nor with history, nor with time. In fact, uh, he clearly uh, says that temples and churches, ceremonies and rituals, prayers and uh, bells, they are all uh, good for a kindergarten of religion. And um, these are good for children. But when we are grown up, what was good for children, we should throw away. So therefore, um, apparently, uh, to him, art was uh, not the primary concern. As regards uh, time, uh, he was concerned with the timeless and not with time. And uh, as regards evolution uh, through time in history, he was hardly concerned with evolution in time in history. He was concerned with involution. In fact, uh, Swamiji or Ramakrishna, Ma Sharada, uh, were all like uh, divinities in crisis. They summed up thousands of years of history in the short span of their life. So they were involved, like a molas is involved. I mean, uh, there is a great potential which is being unwrapped in the short span of a few years. So, he is concerned with uh, this internal journey not the external journey of forms as such. Um, as regards uh, time, history, and this course is also to be read in the perspective of East and West encounter. One recalls what he wrote to the Hell Sisters once. But there is a, the funniest uh, story in the papers here. Says the cyclonic Hindu is here. He is a guest of the Palmers. Mr. Palmer has become a Hindu. And he is going with Swamiji to India. He has only laid down two conditions. One, the parcherans, meaning horses, raised in his lord house firm, must be used to draw the chariot of Jagannath. Number two, the jersey cow must be admitted as part of the sacred pantheon of Indian cows. What he was uh, uh, pointing out was a, uh, a 
a great divide between the market oriented ethos of the West and the pursuit of the sacred in the East and uh, we know that he was also talking about harmonizing East and West he was talking about uh, uh, harmony rather than dissension between the two and yet uh, uh, while one um, looks at uh, some of his uh, statements scattered throughout his uh, works which have to be culled and synthesized in his manner one finds that um, he is um, concerned with um, a movement certainly that the movement from the visible to the invisible from the signifier to the signified uh, from the uh, pratika uh, on which uh, meaning is superimposed in adharopa in the language of Shankara to a luminous uh, uh, radiant reality which is beyond all symbols and signs so to him art was only a play of the finite in this un infinite universe and um, this search uh, for the infinite beyond the finite was to transcend what it was uh, regulated by Bibarta Desha Kala Nimitta Nama Rupa. He specifically mentions these in volume 8. And one remembers the Sankhya Shloka Vidyate Hrida Granthi Kshyante Sarva Sangsaya. The scales fall from the eyes. And one recalls uh, the Shankar Shloka, Upanishadic Shloka. Dasuparna Sajuja Sakaya Samane Vikshe Parishasso Jate. Two birds. One sitting on a lower branch, the other on a upper branch. The one on the lower branch sometimes takes bitter fruits, sometimes sweet fruits, and uh, wonders about the pervasive calm which envelops the bird on the upper branch. So it uh, starts ascending branch by branch and it reaches the bird on the upper branch and it merges in that uh, bird and finds that uh, both are the same it is this uh, discovery of self which is the uh, matter of this uh, internal journey to subject it to history of art an art appreciation one again had to hunt uh, through Swamiji and one found um, that in one place uh, he mentions that basically it is like a rectification of consciousness 
जत्तंतर परिणाम प्रकृत्तापुरा प्रकृति नाम वरण भेदस्त तत क्षेत्रिक टू ट्रांसलेट द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ नेचर कम्स इन द मैनर ए कल्टिवेटर रिमूव्स द ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन इन द फील्ड बंड्स एंड लेट्स इन द फ्लो ऑफ वाटर टू फ्लड द फील्ड so nibidita also speaks about william blake speaks about cleansing the doors of our perception so that one can see the unseen behind the scene so how to do it when you shall show the slides we remember the logo of the mission the lotus in waters which uh, ripple like the world of karma the encircling serpent epitomizing kundalini in a yogi the sun which radiates epitomizing gyana and the hansa in the center soham symbolizing bhakti devotion so the analytical active energetic contemplative the vaya contemplativa and the vaya activa that to be united as per this uh, logo and um, when talking about art it clearly says like lily it must spring from the ground be nourished by the soil and yet rise above it uh so that was not enough one had to look for his uh, concrete observations because art cannot be illustrated only with abstractions and postulates like these certainly art appreciation will uh, require a uh, more definitive approach when one once one is talking about art in history and in time in the conventional sense so i looked and i find that he mentions in conversation with ranada prasad dasgupta founder of the jubilee art academy that uh, art is not to be a pinch back imitation of reality like photography not an exact likeness uh it has to express an idea so when we shall see uh, the photographs we shall see that even swami ji's uh, conception of the belur mat temple or the symbol went beyond uh, the external chajjas jharokhas uh buttresses joists the material used sandstone or chunar sandstone or uh other material including marble it uh, transcend the material to the incorporeal 
how it does, we shall try to understand. Uh, then he um, also says that uh, modern architecture is a degradation from ancient for pristine forms. It's like piled up boxes. Now, to say this to a contemporary architect who deals with Corbusier, his uh, unites in Marseille or the high rises that are coming up on the riverfront here, to them it would not, uh, it would uh, seem like sacrilege that he would be talking about uh, Chalachitras, gilded Jaipur pictures, um, cottages, and the and he would uh, excoriate collections of uh, European bric-a-brac in local museums. So when you are talking about the gallery, art and museum, and if you are talking about uh, reconceptualizing Swamiji in the context of the uh, art gallery or the museum, you have to contextualize uh, the collection, through the collection, from ex situ display to in situ revitalization. And uh, from collection of objects to articulation of ideas. Um, then coming back from his uh, comments comparing ancient and contemporary architecture, I looked for some comments on medieval art and I found that he uh, speaks about uh, in terms of plaudits. He compares the Orissa Danceuse images of temples like Rajarani and Lingeshara, etc. with the Venus of Medici, Venus the Milo, etc. and says that they don't compare unfavorably. He also speaks about ruined temples in the forests as comparable to the Parthenon. Now one may say that he has a jaundiced view, more patriotic than rational. But uh, he would say that uh, we, have, we do not see the principles behind the practice. Therefore, we have this uh, uh, blindness we suffer from. He uh, spoke about uh, Indo-Saracenic art as that not as good as ancient Indian art, but he spoke about uh, Mughal art in Taj Mahal and Juma Masjid. Um, as uh, better than contemporary Western art. Now, how is it better has to be explained in his terms, not in ours. To the extent they express the idea uh, through the fabric of material, um, about Buddhist art also he has uh, an interesting observation. He speaks about 500 years of law, 500 years of images, 
500 years of tantra, temples and priests. He is speaking about a certain movement away uh, from a faith uh, which uh, was uh, focused on meditation and uh, self-reform. Buddha says, Jaklesha sa bodhi jas sangsara tan nirvanam He uh, also in his uh, seat which we can see in Bodh Gaya undertook an involution of will and uh, then uttered the truth to his disciples be lamps unto yourselves atma dipo bhava and uh, um, basically he was talking about uh, going back to Buddha from these uh, ceremonials and huge temples and structures to the essential idea of Buddha Karuna Paramita Arjava Anabhasada the when Buddha Maradharshana is discussed by Kumarasami. He says uh, Buddha is uh, Mara transformed. How a human being becomes suprahuman without uh, giving up the human status. So the evolution again is uh, an internal one. Talking about uh, Christian art, he says the Jesus of Nazareth was a true son of the Orient. Um, the idea of Madonna was better understood by Asia than by Europe. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall give his life for or her life for me shall find it. Birds have their nests, beasts have their lairs, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Christians, go back to Christ. One remembers a 16th century religious political book, Pierce Plowman, in which uh, it is said, never lighter was leaf upon the Indian tree than thy love was when it took the flesh and blood of man, fluttering, piercing, like the needle point. Even the language vibrates with that incorporeal sense of the uh, Christ. 
So, when he talks about uh, Ramakrishna, Maharada, they talk about the supreme love they had, transcending all castes, all sects, all denominations, all racial boundaries. The love which should uh, embrace the entire creation, the flora, the fauna, the human and the non-human communities, including a cat for Maasharada. Um, so, when we are talking about um, history, change and time, we have to pit Swamiji's theory and uh, understanding against the Western understanding of the evolution of art. One uh, recalls Hegel in his philosophy of aesthetics, etc. That Indian art is uh, a problem. It uh, falls between two stools. It tries to divineize the finite, finitize the divine, and uh, suffers from inadequate symbolism. Paul Hacker was a scholar, a redoubtable scholar of Advaita Vedanta. He said that the Logos seat in India is barren in its native soil. It uh, finds uh, flowering and fruition only when transplanted to the, to the soil, fertilized by rationalism and naturalism, the stream of uh, Western thought. In other words, to them, Indian art was uh, to, I mean, to quote people like uh, Raskin, etc., was an exercise in uh, grotesque, hydrated monsters, carlic use, gnomes, demons. It was not concerned with the nature. On the other hand, Swamiji says that Indian art is concerned with finding God in nature, whereas Western art finds uh, nature in God. And uh, when we compare Greek art, which is uh, held up as the perfection itself, we find that its uh, parameters are physical, entasis, sophrosine, uh, counter diminution, Polycleton and Lisippan canons against which India talks about Lakshanas. The Lakshanas which uh, Buddha has as a great human being. And uh, he also talks about uh, Asian art 
mentions uh, Yokohama Taikan, the Japanese painter, who looks for the inner as against the outer nature. And he talks about the voice of Asia as the voice of religion, while the voice of Europe, specifically the voice of Greece, is the voice of politics, in which society, humanity, everything in external nature is subjected to art. So we are uh, talking about uh, Swamiji and we have been said that we should uh, provide an Western context to the expression here. He does talk about uh, both Europe and India having become old and asleep. But Europe found its feet again in a tremendous burst of energy in the Florentine Renaissance. India still sleeps and needs an infusion of energy. And that infusion of energy will come from a mutual fecundation of Eastern and Western horizons. Um, the Satta of uh, India and Asia should be united with the Rajas of the West and in this context he also talks about the union of the physical, the physical sciences in Europe, uh, the perception um, of the material reality as against the physical and the metaphysical universe being seen as one in India. But uh, as we know, in the current uh, world, there is a growing isomorphism of verbal and genetic codes. Uh, matter and energy and uh, a co-evolutionary interdependence of uh, the environment, physical and non-physical. So the world is coming around uh, to Swamiji's uh, perception of uh, uh, the history of time. When um, I am uh, saying more than I should because we should show the pictures, but since it is also a class on theory as well as uh, practice, um, we uh, remember some of the words from Samarangana Sutra Dhara. Uh, by King Bhoja. The architect is not just to know the material, the brick, the cement, the glass, or the new materials as you can see today all over the world. He says, Sthapati sthapanarhasyat sarva shastra visharada Amat Saryascha Tantrika Tattavi Jatavan Ganitagya Puranagya Anandatpur Lubdha Ka Chittagya Sarvadeshagya Sattavadi Jitendriya Arogicha Apramadicha Sapta Vyasana Vivarjita. What a list of qualities to expect from an architect. 
I mean, the architect uh, is expected to have qualities of both head and heart to be able to really construct the building of the future. Jashodhara in Kama Sutra, on, on, on Kama Sutra, his commentary, 12th century commentary on Kama Sutra. Rupa Bheda Pramanani Bhava Lavanya Yojanam Sadrisham Vannika Bhanga Iti Chitram Sadangakam. However, uh, Swamiji would see these as uh, the external characteristics of uh, art as defined by Kama Sutra or ex- explained by Jashodhara. He would look for the inner animation and vibration of life without which uh, it is uh, not art. So uh, now we can go to the uh, slides. Have we come to the slides? Yes. Well, um, this was shown before in the earlier lecture. And uh, we have seen the analysis of this structure as a synthesis of Western and Eastern forms of Western uh, basilica and Eastern caves in the hall of uh, Chajjas and Jharukhas in Rajput palaces, of uh, uh, domes uh, in Eastern and Western uh, permutations and combinations, of uh, Dikpalas as shown in Indian iconography, and of uh, the symbol which shows next Hangsa giving access to the Paramahangsa inside. Next. And the Lotus Medallion, you will find in numerous permutations and combinations throughout Indian architecture, whether it is in uh, Mount Abu or in Khajuraho or elsewhere. Next. Next. I come by a sudden quantum jump to another issue because we are supposed to be talking about contemporary art and uh, Indian art together. Now this is a bull drawn by Hussein in a, with his uh, uh, emulation of Western um, cubism, sharp edges, etc. Next. This is a bull from ancient rock art, Lascaux, France. Franco Cantabrian. Next. Can we switch off the two lights, half lights? Yeah. Please. Shall we? Which reminds me that uh, uh, when uh, talking about uh, light and darkness. We have this uh, word from the ancient uh, texts, Tama Asit Tamasa Gudam, darkness wrapped in darkness. And uh, Milton's passage, there was no darkness, there was no light, only darkness visible. And when we talk about uh, depiction of Kali, 
which should she see that uh, realization and fulfillment of these passages just because we talked about the lights now this is also Franco Cantabrian rock art about 25,000 years from now next this is a uh, a bull in a streetite cell from Indus Valley Civilization next this is a bull from Bhimbetka so one is moving back and forth next another uh, seal from Indus Valley next the Rampur Babul in the Rashtrapati Bhavan Moria next again a, a bull from rock art in Bhimbetka and Jaura also has similar forms so why are you showing this to show how there is a continuity as well as change in perception that the that the contemporary is not necessarily qualitatively superior to the ancient its a uh, approach may not necessarily be more natural or rational than the prehistoric that uh, there is a same uh, kind of a Uh, feeling uh, for the life of the animal not only its external coat and that life of the animal is articulated uh, very sensitively by anonymous artists whereas uh, in contemporary art uh, there is a search for meritorious spectacular effects with uh, a uh, an induction of uh, theories of uh, light and form next again rock art move on this is a worldly art familiar to show that uh, there is a continuity between rock art and uh, contemporary folk art in terms of superimposed triangles and uh, in to show the human form the hearts etc but when one uh, looks for charting the history in time one has to remember that uh, ethnography doesn't necessarily offer a clue to the meaning of this art because the environment might have changed in 4 5000 years therefore a contemporary uh, condition cannot be used to unlock an prehistoric condition or behavior patterns however there is replicative experimental and cognitive archaeology one of my friends has undertaken an expedition in a prehistoric kind of a boat put together by him from the sumba island in indonesia to australia to demonstrate that the human being uh, 
uh, had attained cognitive capability 800,000 800, uh, years ago. And to uh, say uh, that uh, the cognitive capability came in with only with writing or with script is not necessarily true. And uh, much of this orality, the sovereignty of orality, can be unlocked even today in the uh, among the hinterland communities of India and uh, Australia and Latin America. And there would be a certain uh, universality of perception. If one looks at the art across the space and time, one will find that there is a similar uh, perception of the world which transcends time and space. And uh, uh, they still uh, drill or groove objects or use psychiatrists on their body, body art, and uh, use traces with uh, local fiber and feathers which uh, go back to prehistory. Um, <clears throat> but uh, what the scientists do is to use radiation dosimetry uh, to assess the rate of decay in the stone or use micro erosion dating to assess the fracture the extent of the fracture. And uh, they also use micro nanostratigraphy of a pigment which has fallen from the painting into the stratigraphy of the excavation. Techniques are okay, but the understanding our prehistoric tribal and folk art has to transcend use of materials and techniques and understand the deep empathy uh, for nature which Swamiji speaks about the deep respect uh, which uh, made uh, them see Lingodev in Bastar as analogous to Lord Shiva and uh, in the drama dedicated to Lingo Jatra by hundreds of thousands of people in Bastar the rivers the mountains uh, the forests, the streams, they play a role. They become dramatic personae. When we are talking about the universe as the theatre in terms of Samiji, and when we are t talking about his uh, apprehension of older art as more genuine than contemporary art, we are talking about this uh, kinesthetic apperception of nature and uh, which accounted for uh, the survival of the planet at this point of time as we explained last time even without a comet shower or a geological cataclysm we are advancing towards the sixth extinction and the human being is the agent, unlike before. 65 million years ago, the dinosaur was extinct. The human being might be extinct long before uh, it is long, long, very much after it is born because of the oblivion of this connection of art and nature, which Samiji speaks about all the time. Next. 
This is uh, Saura Art, Jharkhand. Next. Again, going back to the dance, the uh, male image in Indus Valley. See the supple play and the uh, use of the form uh, to express a kind of a uh, inner uh, surge of life. It is not just a piece of stone. It is alive. Next. The dancing uh, statuette which is very well known to everyone. And uh, next. Jumping to the Mauryan the Patna Didargan statue. There is a change in the form, the outer form, the inner life maybe, but it becomes a uh, uh, little more stultified. Whatever the elegance may be, there is a certain desiccation, stiffening. People like Ferguson and uh, Marshall see the Mauryan art as a happy uh, imitation of Greek art forms um, through Perso-Hellenic influence. And uh, they see later Indian art as a deterioration from the simple to the complex. Next this Venus, the Medici, and next, the Orisan uh, dancer, uh, Swamiji, the people would say that uh, it is his preference. I mean, uh, in terms of quality, they might see the, the marble statue as better. Now, what is better or uh, Worse is another matter. What we are talking about is uh, an expression of an idea. Now this is a Shala Vanjika, the uh, expression of a, uh, an idea when at the touch of a uh, lovely woman's foot or even a glance makes a tree come to flower and blossom. And Kumaraswamy talks in this regard about water cosmology, a pervasive theory of art pervading Asia in which um, the rotary cycle of waters, uh, the sun in the sky, uh, the waters on the ground, these subterranean waters, they come together in a convergence uh, to keep the creation alive. Next, these are images which uh, in the south, Belur. Next, the entire, the entire world comes together, flora, fauna, Ravi Barma, which is not appreciated by Swamiji. I mean, uh, he says that uh, it is uh, uh, an imitation but uh, he would hang his head in shame at Ravi Barma's uh, art, uh, which doesn't compare favorably for him with the uh, art of India. Next. This is a Roman, uh, this he likes. He talks about Pompeii. This is the Pompeii painting. So in this Pompeii painting, uh, he rates as superior uh, to much of contemporary Indian art because of the, I think, the uh, fidelity to nature and the um, combination of ethos and pathos to a certain extent, passion and intelligence. Next. Rodin. That uh, he 
his uh, use of uh, form to reflect light on the surface to use the muscles with an inner sense of the structure next David Michelangelo now why are, are we showing this uh, art from all over the world does it illustrate Swamiji's ideas does it help the course <coughs> next please this is uh, Udayagiri a Gupta image a powerful form with arrested breath much of Indian art is explained in terms of a body which is uh, rippling with arrested breath and uh, if the woman's form expands like a flower the man's form also uh, dilates with uh, uh, the arrested breath which ripples to the muscles next here in Pala art there is a change of perception this has become more like a yantra and it has become a, an image for frontal inspection flattened desiccated um, with uh, the ornament suffocating the form rather than the form asserting itself and yet it has beauty of an icon made according to iconometric principles according to correct proportions next I move to another theme this is uh, you, you have seen uh, Bharut in the Indian Museum Kolkata now the uh, Bharut uh, next next please this is uh, Bharut again next Sachi relief next Amaravati next yeah <laughs> but that will require a separate because you see every sculpture uh, one can devote about uh, an hour to the sculpture yes. I am only giving a comparison let's uh, go back I shall explain <laughs> Next, uh, go back. Uh, now, next. next. Uh, uh, Indian Museum, uh, National Museum. National uh, Museum. Uh,
भरूत सामरावती मुभमेंट अफ फर्म देखा जाए जेटा नहीं बाकफर जिन जार्मन छें पढ़ाते टीच इन शिकागो हि कम्पेयर्स दैट दिस इज ए फर्म इन हुईच देर इज ए unconscious lack of clarity the forms uh, are congested and uh, they don't move freely um, there is an orthogonal projection from the uh, in, in the view from the sky the forms are scattered and spread out they are not uh, uh, fused or coherent next थियोरिटीज of uh, open and closed tectonic and artectonic etc to explain the evolution of relief so uh, bharut was uh, seen as uh, unconsciously unclear in other words i mean they were not even uh, certain about how to use the perspective or the uh, three dimensionality etc next এটা হলো সেকেন্ড সেঞ্চুরি বিসি ওর সাথে শুঙ্গ ডাইনাস্টি শুঙ্গ আর নেক্সট এটা अमरावती तो ये थे कि बोले उधर नाम विष्णु कुंडीन तो नॉय कि जनों दे तो ये थे ना नागर नागर जून कुंडा अमरावती शायद साउथ है कर्नाटका 
তো এটা এটা হলো সাঁচি অ্যাবাউট দিস দি ওয়েস্টার্ন আর্ট থিওরি সেজ দ্যাট দিস ইজ কনসিয়াসলি ক্লিয়ার নাও ইট ইজ মোর সেকুলার ওয়ান সি ইজ দ্য ডেইলি অ্যাভোকেশনস অ্যান্ড দে অ্যান্ড দিস ইজ এক্সপ্লেন্ড অ্যাজ অ্যান আনফোল্ডিং scroll like the torana which used to be carried in by the uh, in the festivals uh, and this is suffused with uh, uh, devotion and the uh, uh, the forms are more uh, uh, supple and uh, coherent unlike bharut now this is uh, also uh, uh, first century bc uh, and advance in time next now the amaravati uh, is uh, um, later i mean in the uh, uh, that that we are uh, moving into uh, the late second century bc to the uh, 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 sorry to late first century ad to first second century ad and the forms become become more uh, agitated and more uh, uh, what shall i say um, um, into chiaroscuro there is a greater play of light and shade and uh, the background shadows uh, they are, they become prominent and the uh, movements become more frenetic uh, next so the relief i am trying to show the relief i mean compared uh, as compared between north south next Uh, then this is uh, a, a, in Tala. This is sixth century AD. I mean, uh, in uh, post Gupta and uh, a form in which, uh, uh, which was this was excavated under my supervision. And uh, these are forms in which um, they become more uh, um, uh, educated, and uh, uh, the forms are invaded by uh, floriate. Uh, zoom it uh, zoom morphological uh, you see motifs so they become a kind of a mix next th- th- uh, this is uh, uh, you know mahabalipuram i mean uh, rock carving i mean uh, 7th century ad and uh, uh, how the rock itself is used as the canvas uh, for uh, by the pallavas uh, uh, for uh, the relief sculpture and uh, the relief, relief becomes uh, highly uh, projected and uh, um, uh, and uh, and relates to the spectator i mean unlike uh, the earlier reliefs in which the spectator is not considered uh, that he is there uh, the painter or the sculptor is oblivious of their existence next uh this is uh, ghiberti uh, the bronze door i mean uh, uh, in uh, italy uh, uh, from the uh, uh, 15th 16th century and the uh, this is a uh, uh, door which is very famous i mean made for a, a church in which uh, all the laws of perspective uh, i mean uh, are, are used which will again require a lot of explanation i mean with uh, each detail next ji italy eh it all florence liberty ah shanti hote motamoti motho ache ha amravati ar amravati dokhin আনকনসিয়াসলি আনক্লিয়ার মানে পরিষ্কার নয় কি নয় এটা তো 
এটা ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল পারসেপশনের উপর ডিপেন্ডেন্ট কারণ আমরা তো আর্ট অ্যাপ্রিসিয়েশনের পয়েন্ট অফ ভিউ থেকে দেখছি তাদের পক্ষে ওই রকের সারফেস এবং একটা ফ্ল্যাট সারফেস দুটোর মধ্যে যে কাজ করা যেটা সেটার মধ্যে ন্যাচারালি দ্য চিজেল উইল মিল মুভ ডিফারেন্টলি দ্য হ্যামার অ্যান্ড চিজেল উইল মুভ ডিফারেন্টলি এবং ওখানে ওরা একটা যে দেখাচ্ছে মানে গঙ্গাবতরণ আই মিন দি সিনারি দেখাচ্ছে এবং তার যে পুরো পিকচার তার মধ্যে যে সমস্ত স্টোরিটাকে একটা ওই ফর্ম্যাটের মধ্যে নিয়ে আসছে ফলে তাতে একটুখানি ক্রাউডিং হয়েছে তারা একটা থিম নিয়ে কাজ করছে না মানে বুদ্ধ মানে সেই আইকোনোগ্রাফি থেকে দে আর মুভ ডেভে দি ফর্মাল আইকোনোগ্রাফি তাই জন্য ডেফিনেটলি ওই টাইম এবং স্পেসের সঙ্গে সঙ্গে ডিফারেন্স তো হবেই ঠিক বলেছে হ্যাঁ অন্ধ্রপ্রদেশে ওটা সত্যি কথা এবং ওটা পাথরকে যে ব্যাপার ইউজ করছে বলছেন আমি ঠিক বলছেন হ্যাঁ ওটা আর্কিটেকচার পার্ট সেটা পরে দেখাবো নেক্সট এখন তাহলে তালার কথা বলছিল আমি এসে গেছি তালাতে দিস ইজ এ রোমান এম্পায়ার আই মিন সিক্সটিন সেঞ্চুরি সি পেন্টিং অফ এ হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ কর্ণকোপিয়া কর্ণকোপিয়া অ্যান্ড হি ইজ শোন অ্যাজ এ পিকচার অফ বাউন্টি and uh, you see abundance next uh, the what i have tried to show is that the uh, forms are used physically to create a combination of uh, uh, shapes next now this is a celtic warrior uh, uh, 16th century jekhane ei somosto ei je barmo parano hoyeche the armory that is uh, formed of uh, uh, different kinds of animals and uh, um, so this is the kind of armor which they used to wear again uh, trying to show that uh, uh, the same uh, kind of approach is being used for different kinds of uh, presentations uh, across the world next now this is a, 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 a sculpture which i uh, it was excavated under my supervision long back 1987 and uh, now uh, western scholars uh, dismissed it as a kind of a, a, i mean uh, incomprehensible uh, congregation of uh, uh, forms uh, which cannot be understood and uh, I, i have a book on this uh, which explains it in great detail. detail that this is a pashupati form and uh, it relates to uh, relates the image uh, to the local inscriptions and the coins uh, uh, using uh, the iconological and iconographic uh, allusions in the inscriptions it it at tala uh, bilaspur uh, in uh, uh, in uh, in chatisgarh um, এটা ওখানে আছে অন দি অন দি স্পট তালাতেই আছে it is on this spot uh, but they have you, because of tourism they have uh, they have uh, put up all kinds of structures above and around it and uh, so this is uh, uh, we identified it as basically a pashupati image but it has a, a multivalence of character which is explained in great detail in the book uh, so this is pashu pasha vimakshana how the, uh, the same uh, creatures which are shown in the uh, temple they ultimately merge uh, in the uh, body of the image so this looks also very indonesian sorry indonesian no no it's tala bilaspur india the manner in which you know these Uh, so this shall be later if, if there is a, there, there, there is a lot of reflection of uh, this uh, art in china i shall show you china next significance to tal to it 
তাহলে তো শেষ হবে না আমি বলছি যে ওয়ান ইমেজ উইল রিকোয়ার থ্রি লেকচার্স আর ফোর লেকচার্স সো আই এম ওনলি গিভিং এ ব্রড জাস্ট ওয়েটিং কিউরিওসিটি অ্যান্ড এক্সাইটিং অ্যানোয়েন্স রাদ দ্যান স্যাটিসফাইং ইট so uh, next uh, now this is from uh, china i mean i have visited this uh, uh, place this is long man cave in china uh, where uh, uh, these uh, the same form travels to china about uh, 60 years later from 6th century to early uh, 7th century the form travels and transforms uh, uh, the bodhisattva images which are planted there on both sides of the door and there is a, a the inscription which uh, is very eloquent which talks about reaching beyond the corporeal to the incorporeal next Uh, long men cave in china near loyang uh, uh, now uh, the, these are the uh, structures which i am showing i mean uh, more like a hut i mean uh, i hole next um indo saracenic art fatehpur sikri where is lot of blend of uh, uh, indigenous uh, uh, architectural forms and uh, uh, central asian architectural forms so every every structure is a, a, a matter for analysis detailed analysis next and uh, this is ajanta i mean uh, pillars and the uh, uh, the the pillar itself have been re- uh, would require a, a separate lecture because how the pillar is constructed how the bharani is constructed what does the uh, different parts mean uh, because uh, uh, every part has a name and uh, uh, um, uh, and ultimately uh, uh, it also imitates a um, uh, temple vertically next uh dilwara i mean the uh, inside the uh, uh, temple the uh, uh, the circular ceiling and the decoration the ornate uh, minutiae of the decoration and the meaning is there but the meaning will uh, require explanation and this uh, kind of uh, these uh, uh, ceilings have different names the ceilings will re- require a separate lecture but there must be about uh, 30 different kinds of ceilings with different names next uh kashmir uh, i mean uh, uh, architecture pandrethan in which uh, the forms uh, uh, become angular and uh, they partake of central asian uh, characteristics next kandariya mahadev which i think is more familiar uh, to people again uh, uh, the ascent of consciousness that ultimately uh, there is a I, i explained last time there is the talat chanda and uddhat chanda and the uh, bhakta uh, becomes uh, abhibhakta by uh, through this ascent of consciousness uh, again this uh, uh, kandariya mahadev temple will require detailed analysis from the padapitha uh, to the jagati now one can explain uh, each uh, limb of the uh, jagati uh, the uh, uh, you see the uh, uh, the khura kumbha kalasa kapatali and uh, relate these temples all over the country only through that uh, 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 instrument uh, because that has been done by people like mr dhaki next bhriyadishya uh, next Tanjabur, no? Tanjabur, Tamil Nadu. Sorry? Next. Tanjabur, Kuyadisha Temple. Then Sun Temple, Modhira, Gujarat. I mean, where uh, uh, you see the, uh, the uh, modern bhaps, I mean, which one sees in Adalaj, which are not modern, say 16th, 18th century. So the bhaps were there even in the uh, 10th century, 11th century temples. Next. Um, coming back to Parthenon. I mean, we have seen Indian architecture. We are seeing Parthenon. And now the Parthenon is seen as a uh, symphony, I mean, and harmony, of harmony and balance, etc. Uh, but uh, 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 
uh, what we are trying to show is there is a great diversity of architectural forms in India and uh, uh, so one looks for unity so in the when we showed the uh, um, the balloon mud structure we tried to demonstrate that uh, there was this attempt at synthesis uh, in Swamiji next now this is Pantheon now Pantheon uh, in Rome um, now the Pantheon in Rome this uh, is called the eye of the dome and these are squinches on the side and there is a gradual uh, you see uh, uh, movement of the structure from circular uh, to square uh, 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 to uh, a kind of a central um, uh, oculus it is called the eye of the dome and uh, the light flows in through that next coming back again to uh, uh, folk forms uh, the simplicity and the uh, uh, and the uh, local ambience even the doors are uh, carved all locally by the uh, people poor people who live there next um, a Bengal form which is known to everybody Vishnupur Jor Bangla next painting, uh, Mughal painting, um, which uh, uh, Samiji was talking about its uh, uh, superiority, its uh, 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 three-dimensionality, its uh, um, hustle-bustle, its uh, um, uh, arrangement, I mean uh, kind of a continuous narration vertically and uh, a, a story uh, being narrated here of a, an attack on a fort of, of its uh, conquest etc next uh, this is a uh, Indus Valley uh, uh, town plan. Now similar town plans have been found uh, in uh, certain excavations again supervised by me in Sirpur in the 6th century and uh, 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 and Sirpur in 6th century which uh, has uh, water management structures, markets um, uh, watchtowers and, uh, and uh, um, uh, grain bins etc. Next Familiar? Uh, so uh, uh, now I'm trying uh, coming to the end because uh, the contemporary anxiety. I mean the uh, the Spanish Civil War, uh, the uh, Guernica. Uh, the times have become wrought and uh, riven, and uh, uh, so contemporary art uh, goes into uh, jagged uh, forms and uh, 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 reinvents art in many ways. Next. Picasso. Next. Very well known. Now this is another very well known uh, painting by Edward Munch. Uh, it is called The Scream. The scream, uh, uh, tears of the sky, the tears of the waters, the tears of the face. Uh, it is uh, uh, an expression of uh, contemporary angst and anxiety, and uh, in, a, in a, between two world wars, and uh, uh, the world, uh, you see, facing uh, various kinds of uh, climatic and other disasters. Next back to the simplicity of uh, um, our huh? Apatani uh, uh, they are uh, north east north east uh, north east uh, structure which is called Tong Ghar which is called Tong Ghar which is called Tong Ghar which is called Apatani te, they have also done uh, uh, you see a combination of PC culture, agriculture, horticulture and sacred groves and waste management so that is a uh, matter to be learned in their architecture how they have combined uh, resource management uh, with architecture. Next. This is a uh, woodcut, uh, 19th century woodcut. I mean, we tried uh, when uh, Devdatta was uh, here last time, uh, we tried to reconstruct uh, uh, the woodcuts uh, using the local artists who have almost vanished out of circulation. 
so that uh, that could be used for uh, presenting uh, the history of the Chitpur Road. I mean, uh, how to present contemporary history uh, through art. Next. Again, uh, you see mother and uh, uh, child. I mean, in uh, uh, Khajuraho. Okay, next. Uh, mother and uh, child, I mean, uh, Raphael. And, uh, uh, in Italy, Florence. Florence. Next. Uh, know this image? Uh, uh, this is a P. Huh? No, no, no. This is Pieta by Michelangelo. Uh, Pieta, Pieta by Michelangelo. And uh, uh, um, uh, not Vatican. It is in uh, Florence. Next. Uh, this is uh, a contemporary version uh, by Hussein of uh, Pieta. So he has used the same form to uh, novel and innovative effects. Mother Teresa. The Mother Teresa. Next. Uh, uh, Maharada. I mean, ultimately, uh, next, that uh, uh, the love uh, uh, supreme, uh, which is symbolized. Now, again, going back to uh, uh, the uh, yogic image in this valley. Next, uh, the uh, uh, image of uh, uh, Lord Shiva, uh, I mean, uh, with his uh, uh, three faces. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, looking in different directions in elephant. Uh, next, uh, an image of a yogi again, I mean, uh, in uh, uh, Pala uh, sculpture, Buddha. Next, Buddha uh, again uh, in uh, uh, Pala period. Next. Um, back to Pashupati of Indus Valley, uh, that there is a continuity and also break. And uh, uh, they uh, uh, attempt to see, uh, because Indus Valley itself requires a separate uh, uh, discussion. I mean, all these theories of Aryan invasion and uh, uh, you see uh, uh, desiccation, um, uh, floods, etc. And uh, everything is discussed in terms of political uh, conflict. I mean, is it Aryan or is it Dravidian? But what is not discussed is the art. The art, uh, 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 there is so much of art there. So many, uh, I mean, uh, uh, so much of glyptic art, stone art, uh, seal art, uh, that requires a separate discussion. Next. Uh, Christ uh, as an image of compassion, Karuna, Aramita, uh, is universal, so it also uh, is there with Christ. Next, uh, Buddha, again that uh, Karuna, uh, uh, animating the face, uh, illuminating the face, an inner radiance. Next. Uh, uh, Ramakrishna, I mean, as uh, the yogi, I mean, um, uh, sitting uh, in the uh, Belumat, I mean, uh, who is uh, uh, the Paramahamsa. Next, because it's over. Next, 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 over, next, 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 and any questions after this? How much? I mean, we have finished our time, isn't it? Yeah. Uh. Now 6.13. Huh? 613. 30. 30. It's already 6.30. Okay. Uh, 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 देखों प्रीस्टोरिक एक्सकेविशन जब उन पहले लेते तब परे मेसोलिते चालकोलिते मेगालिते यही जैसे कौन सा ये तार नॉर्मली स्ट्रैटिग्राफी तो पाव जाए अतः वर्टिकल स्ट्रैटिग्राफी 
হরিজন্টাল স্ট্র্যাটিগ্রাফিতে কম ভার্টিক্যাল স্ট্র্যাটিগ্রাফিতে বেশি মাউন্ট থাকে সেখানে ফার্স্ট দে বোর এ হোল টু আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড হোয়ে দ্যাট দ্যার ইজ এ পসিবিলিটি অ্যান্ড দেন দে গো ডাউন স্টেজ বাই স্টেজ অ্যান্ড টেক আউট এনি স্কালপচার এনি ফাইন লাইক পটারি সেরেমিক অ্যাসেম্বলেজ ফ্রম ইট অ্যান্ড দেন দে পুট ইট অ্যাসাইড কয়েন্স so then the numismatic evidence uh, if it is available uh, then it can be dated because the inscriptions can be dated uh, there is a history of epigraphy there is a history of uh, epigraphy in numismatics also uh, but uh, the paleolithic and the um, uh, and the mesolithic art there is a lot of controversy uh, like in bimbetka the excavation has been done but there is a global controversy about uh, uh, the auditorium cave Uh, the excavation etc uh, whether uh, uh, the cupules uh, cupules are depressions which are found on the rocks or surface which have been found in the excavated strata uh, belong to the paleolithic period or not in other words is bimbetka the oldest rock art in the uh, world or not there is a lot of patriotic uh, fight between india and uh, other uh, parts of the world um, uh, so um, Uh, but in historic uh, uh, excavation like in uh, tala uh, one doesn't have to go very far so it can be horizontal excavation also and this uh, image of uh, shiva was found in a horizontal excavation it was lying prone on the face we had to turn it uh, uh, back and we found it and uh, um, uh, so the uh, excavation um now people are talking about uh, 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 excavation of cognitive strata in other words i mean how do you discover the meaning of uh, uh, an earlier image unless uh, earlier uh, form art form unless you uh, uh, do cognitive archaeology or replicative archaeology unless you replicate some of those uh, uh, forms uh, today and see how it was done how the tool was used and what kind of meaning it has uh, in contemporary uh, isolated ecological society like uh, in hills and forests uh, mo- some of these uh, uh, hunter gatherers still live in india among cholanaikens and other places of the among the other groups of the country so one can uh, go to those isolated groups but uh, excavation is a big subject again boy suggest boy eh boy suggest boy excavation er upore tale appreciation of art eight eight up in the bapara kichu ekta solid boy acha acha this is a solid boy that is synopsis for me ha boyechi kintu sei boyo লেখা হয়েছে অনেক দিন আগে নাইনটিন টোয়েন্টি সেভেনে কুমার স্বামী লিখেছিলেন হিস্ট্রি অফ ইন্ডিয়ান অ্যান্ড ইন্দোনেশিয়ান আর্ট ইট স্টিল স্ট্যান্ডস আউট হ্যাঁ পাওয়া যায় তো অনেক রিপ্রিন্ট হয়েছে ডোভার পাবলিকেশনস এবং সেই বইটা আজকেও ইজ বেটার দ্যান আদার লোক টেক্সট বুকস লাইক আদার যে টেক্সট বুক বাই হার্লে British there is a textbook by uh, uh, this American lady um, uh, Huntington Huntington Susan Susan, Susan Huntington Susan. Susan Huntington now these are textbooks but they don't have that uh, uh, appreciation which uh, which uh, Kumar Sami has and which has not been beaten so far in very short uh, uh, crisp language uh, he has expressed the total evolution i think so Kumar Sami is easily available history of indian and indonesian art uh, uh, anand krish anand kentish kumar swami he was a sri lankan and he taught uh, he was in uh, uh, boston museum of fine arts he was the curator there and he has written a lot in fact i mean uh, if you read his uh, uh, literature which you will find i think here in the uh, library here i mean all his books revered study i mean to uh, to understand appreciate uh, uh, the aesthetics and art of indian art there is no better introduction nobody has beaten his uh, 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 you see uh, keen sense of the art please tell them the spelling of kumar swami the c and not the c 
Sorry? I'm just watching. C C double O M A R A S W A M Y. Ananda Kentish. A N A N D A Kentish. K E N T I S H. Ananda Kentish Kumar Swami. You see, a um, um, lot of texts have been written about uh, uh, sculpture, architecture in different parts of the country. Uh, Sompuras have uh, edited many of the Western Indian texts. Uh, the Kerala University has edited many of the uh, uh, South Indian texts especially uh, Tantra Samuchaya and uh, Manushalaya Chandrika uh, which talks about how to make a house. Um, in uh, East, uh, in uh, uh, Orissa, etc., this Shilpa Prakasha which has also been uh, translated and interpreted. Uh, in uh, uh, Bengal, uh, I uh, am absolutely sure that there will be uh, texts about which I am uh, possibly not uh, um, uh, 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 clear, but uh, uh, it is obvious that the uh, terracotta uh, temples uh, were uh, uh, being organized uh, through artistic guilds, not only texts, there were also guilds. So guilds of artists were there all over the country, uh, like Ayavoles in Karnataka. And uh, uh, so the guilds uh, regulated uh, the uh, customary practices and the rituals and also the uh, distribution of uh, funds, etc. And if you uh, read, uh, for instance, uh, Professor uh, uh, Shetar's uh, Hoysala sculpture, you will uh, 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 see a lot of material on uh, how the artists traveled from one region to another, which artists became more important than others, and how did uh, he, he become, most of them or he, uh, become more important uh, uh, than the other artists, and their migration. But royal patronage, about which you mentioned, that the, uh, there is always a dynastic appellation. Uh, there is always a distinction made between uh, um, court uh, and imperial ateliers and local ateliers. Uh, so the imperial atelier, uh, like in uh, time of Akbar, it was very clear. Uh, the uh, manuscripts which were painted were signed uh, 
by Akbar or by uh, you see Shah Jahan and uh, uh, the facsimiles were also signed. In case of Jaina manuscripts also it is very clear because it is associated with a Jaina Gacha and uh, they are uh, still found in different Bhandaras of the Jainas. They have preserved their uh, you see record very carefully and lot of research has been done on the Jaina uh, art by Mr. Amy Dhaki who was again a great uh, uh, architectural historian and he has done a lot of work on uh, use of architecture for analyzing the chronology and uh, uh, so the guilds have collapsed the imperial ateliers have collapsed uh, the patronage uh, has collapsed uh, so uh, uh, naturally the contemporary art uh, looks for uh, patronage and uh, patronage is mostly found in the west and uh, more in uh, America than in uh, Europe. Uh, so uh, there is a tendency uh, to uh, be liked and uh, uh, so uh, uh, in spite of the fact that somebody could raise the question that there should be Adan Pradhan. I said that there is a lot of Adan but very little Pradhan last time in the last lecture. Now the entire uh, Pradhan was organized by the western artists themselves. I mean whether it was Picasso or Blaming or others, they borrowed uh, uh, or uh, you see uh, Henry Moore, they borrowed from Cycladic art, Micronesian art, African art, they borrowed. It is not that the, uh, this uh, uh, borrowing was organized uh, uh, by uh, these uh, areas. Similarly, India uh, now has uh, uh, been exporting a lot of art, but it is in the contemporary mold. And uh, uh, the contemporary mold is... Uh, I am not saying that one should go back, I mean like the Swamiji was saying and uh, that was being questioned that one, one is not concerned with Swamiji alone for art appreciation uh, but uh, uh, the history of art appreciation um, certainly uh, doesn't show a uh, fidelity uh, to uh, a, uh, a re return to the uh, past. It shows a uh, movement uh, forward, backward, uh, a uh, mixture and um, it is certainly not uh, a unilinear movement, it is a multilinear uh, evolution. And uh, but uh, because of patronage which is offered by the uh, western art museums and galleries markets and the uh, European markets less but there are a lot of uh, these exhibitions, manifestos and documents, even the museums I mean which we have created in the western mold uh, they are all uh, ultimately uh, they pat patronize uh, this kind of art the uh, contemporary uh, uh, forms of art and uh, the few uh, sculptors who are there like in uh, uh, Konarak, near Konarak for instance there are a lot of these traditional sculptors who are still making uh, sculptures in the uh, older mold and then uh, when at the IGNC I tried to uh, revitalize the texts uh, by uh, relating the theory to the practice. Uh, for instance, uh, I invited the Dagar Bandhus uh, for singing uh, the uh, old uh, uh, musical uh, uh, soiris. Uh, then we uh, invited uh, uh, sculptors uh, to uh, uh, recreate uh, uh, the sculptures according to ancient texts. They did it. But the uh, trouble is, though the Archaeological Survey of India uses these people to restore their uh, architecture, uh, they don't acknowledge them and their names are lost. Uh, so uh, the patronage is ultimately uh, um, uh, very minimal and that unless that patronage uh, uh, is wider, I mean it, there is a very little possibility that the uh, uh, Indian traditional art form which evolved on its own rails, I mean the Indian uh, continuity of Indian art uh, has been broken uh, by uh, the intervention of the West and the artists who are trained in the Western mode. 
even in uh, the Cal 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 Calcutta College of Art, there was a running battle uh, between, uh, you see, people uh, of the Avanindranath uh, Tagore School or the Patsy Brown, whether it should be done outdoor or indoor. And uh, uh, and there was a perpetual uh, uh, conflict uh, between the, uh, the Shantiniketan School of Eastern India and the Bombay School of, uh, you see, uh, 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 Hussein and Bruta and others. Uh, so, uh, who went uh, west? And uh, so, uh, Indian art uh, uh, is in a kind of a uh, flux uh, in which uh, uh, Swamiji's, uh, to go back to Swamiji, his uh, suggestion is still relevant. He is not talking about, uh, uh, you see, uh, following uh, his ideals to the fruition. He is talking about uh, blending, uh, harmonization, uh, not dissension. He is not talking about abjuring all Western art forms. He is talking about uh, learning from the West as well as from the East and also bringing them into convergence. Uh, so uh, that uh, mission is remains to be fulfilled. It is the state still under fulfilled. I think two other names should be mentioned here. One is Surendra Dasgupta. Yeah. And the other one is Shri yeah, Sri Aurobindo, they, they are philosophers. I mean, uh, Sri Aurobindo Gupta was a great philosopher. Aurobindo was also a great philosopher. And uh, and uh, one should remember that uh, the translation of the Upanishads uh, and the Gita were done uh, under the supervision of Dara Shiko. And then uh, through French translations, it traveled to uh, United States. And it created the Concord Movement and in Massachusetts. And uh, people like Aurobindo, I mean, uh, in Auroville, or Surinanda Dajgupta or Kesi Bhattacharya is another person who should be named who spoke about Swaraj of ideas that Swaraj of uh, you see political uh, economy is not enough one should also attend Swaraj of ideas the Swaraj of ideas is what Swamiji was also talking about so uh, he uh, remains relevant he was talking about uh, Swaraj rather than Annaraj of ideas attend that or Swaraj heteronomy I mean autonomy rather than heteronomy of ideas uh, through a confluence. So did Swamiji also believe in, you know, developing a nationalist? National? A national art as, in, as opposed to the Western art, and, you know, the Ajanta Caves and Laura Caves, uh, you know, very he was, certainly, he was certainly talking about a national uh, uh, art uh, consciousness, uh, but he uh, certainly didn't leave to uh, fulfill his ideas to fruition. And therefore, most of his uh, ideas, which I have discussed, they have been, uh, they are scattered. Uh, through uh, in so many volumes. So I have called them and synthesized them. So naturally there is an artificiality even in my synthesis. I mean uh, because they have been uh, torn out of the context and uh, put together to explain his uh, appreciation of art. And uh, uh, so Swamiji subtly, uh, Swamiji subtly uh, spoke about synthesis, not analysis. Uh, must go beyond analysis to synthesis. And he tried to demonstrate in his short, I mean, uh, meteoric life uh, to uh, uh, what he could do. That's all. Done or any other hostile or friendly reaction? All friendly. <laughs> I can uh, call it a day. Thank you, sir. Thank you.